get out of these lanes. But right now, I, Dog Champ's got a bit of an edge here in the laning stage. Well, let's see what comes out of this one. We're going to kick off the game between Felt and Dog Champ into the first brawl between the two. And I accidentally took a screenshot, but uh, that's completely fine. Save it for later. Yeah, probably because of the smoke <laughs> gank that's approaching. They're heading all the way from the low ground position. But uh, some of those smokes have already award. popped, and the vision also there. So not too much of a surprise. But Felt, do they counter surprise? Moose is very deep in, and they recognize the situation as well. The lift leveled up into the snake, and Moose is going to take the early punch here, and looks like he's going to drop that grenade. Plus, the co-op scream is going to take down Moose, and maybe they just got an extra. There's four stick charges up on Bloody Nine. There is no charge on the Spirit Breaker, and he doesn't get in range for another extra bash. But Felt going to kick things off with the first blood. Very nice, very nice. Just what they wanted, that ward there, and breaking the smoke really helped them out there to get that vision and get the jump that they really needed. All right, and then I'm dying here. Just, just going to man up and try and take this rune for them. Yeah, might as well. 24 stacks of decay. <laughs> feeling pretty good. Fair, feeling fairly strong as well. But uh, Bounty Runes, it's going to be 3-1. to one. DNM picks the lone bounty on uh, the, uh, the, the side of Dog Champ. I was about to say Five Red as well. Holy damn, it's, it's, ca it's catchy. <laughs> it is very contagious. I mean, they... After doing a whole tour of them, right? It can be a little difficult to switch gears immediately, but we'll get there. Medusa has to be pretty careful in his uh, matchup, too. We've seen the volatility of this hero um, with that mana pool. And I, I found some interesting um, interactions with this. So because the damage you take is so minimal, the, the actual damage, of course, the mana burns really, really fast. But the, um, you know, with Elder Titan Stomp, when you have to do an X mm -hmm. amount of damage for it to break, uh, you can technically do an infinite amount of damage and Medusa will never wake up because you're only yeah. doing like uh, very small amounts of actual damage. Yeah, I heard about that, but Elder Titan just not a hero people really prioritize right now picking whatsoever, yeah. so... Not too many specialists around either, which is a, a bit of a bummer. I feel like there's so much hidden potential in the, uh, in the Elder Titan. Just a bit. But it's not a hero that particularly... I mean, you can build some auras as decent team fight, but the laning stage just isn't cutting it right now, even with the buffs in yeah. 7.33. And we've seen, once you get a hold of these games, it's really hard to lose, so you really want to have a good laning stage. Which I feel like it's been the case for Dota for a while now, yeah, but it's no exception in this patch. In fact, it's probably even more prevalent than ever. Yeah. Hit Mune almost completely uh, out of mana. His moves is just poking away with that long attack range. Constantly harassing and poking the Medusa. Albano Zebra has got his, uh, his hands filled. Keeping them at bay. Right now just looking at the CS. Medusa not doing too hot. Only four last hits and no control in the lane. So going to be falling behind a bit. And at no mana either with 200 uh, HP. Solji might be dead. Use the tombstone in the top lane. Rubik gonna have to make a run for it. And Fade is gonna turn around. They just wanna get that tombstone kill. Not gonna get it. Bloody Nine with the deny, but they're very low on these both off laners on the side of Felt. So bottom is looking pretty rough. Top lane, it, it, it can still be lost very fast with these early levels. I think Dog Champ still has an advantage. Well, I will say there's one saving grace here for Tell this me. top lane. If we check out DNM's inventory, he has purchased himself a Battle Fury recipe. Battle Fury recipe. recipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's so, uh, uh, very early. A lot of uh, that <laughs> early gold he's got really went to absolutely nothing here. That's 100% a misclick. Because that is not necessarily something not you want to get as your first item. <laughs> Oh no, maybe you're just, you know... Uh, he sold it! He actually just sold it. Uh, okay. Uh, and then he tipped him. He's like, okay. He knows. So that helps out the top lane, even though you were completely free farming on DNM, but then you buy Battle Fury Recipe as your first <laughs> item. 
kind of dwindles that advantage back to even. But how did he? How in did fact, he sell Underlord's it? winning now. If you check the network, oh my god! I actually haven't <laughs> seen that in <laughs> such a long time. Oh, God bless Sene Dota. Oh, indeed. Uh, oh, it's good to be home, right? Uh, it really is. I, I didn't see how he sold it. Did he go to the secret shop? Yeah, he just went to the secret okay. shop and sold it. Okay. <laughs> I was like, he had it, and then he didn't. I was looking away elsewhere. I was like, okay, that just happened. So, uh, this lane is what it is. So, yeah, Underlord catching up a very nice amount. And almost in the same CS as DNM is. Level 3, the, the most important level for this Underlord. Get that Hitting second me in bottom. Storm. And in the bottom lane, yeah, Medusa is about to drop, but there's a Lotus, which will uh, provide more than enough survivability versus Moose. I was really hunting for that kill. But Medusa is struggling in this lane. You got complete free farm here on speed, which is never good when you're playing versus a Doom. Then on top of that, it's kind of the issue of Spirit Breaker, right? This hero is not a strong laner. He just isn't. He gets strong later on with levels, which is typically why we see him being played in position four more frequently. He mm -hmm. wants that freedom. He wants to play with a hero that can just buy a Vanguard and just leave him alone. Like, hey, go farm. I'm going to help you out to get your early ring of health. Then after that, I'm out of here. But when you're playing with some Medusa, you can't leave. Not you really, got to yeah. stay in this lane. I just got to look for those small openings that you have, but there's not really any of those either because you're the one creating all those openings to uh, punish your opponents. But Speed's already picked up Mana Boots and has Chain Lightning, so uh, an extra spell in their in their arsenal versus the Medusa. Hidden Mune is not enjoying, does not one bit. He gets hit by a couple more zaps and he doesn't even have the mana to throw in a snake anymore. And Yep, no mana for you. Continuously low. Luckily, he got the Lotus. He went through all of his mangoes already, trying to keep his CS yeah. manageable. The good news is it's going to be the mid lane here. Yeah, Six nice. minute runes coming out. Kits destroying mid lane, and on top of it, getting an arcane rune. Red two, level five and a half. Yeah, that was five heroes in mid. It was five heroes in mid. Both of the supports yeah. rotating it to help out Kits. It's like, all right, we're putting all the all the eggs in the same basket. Might as well soldier. Secure. Walked up into red two and a tombstone. TP Can he out? TP out? Yes, sir. Oh, he did. All right. Well done. And he even used his one charge uh, in the fountain. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> no lingering debuffs, actually, on the, right, bash, on the side zebra. of the dog champ. How many, so, uh, how many bashes can you get? Uh, uh, I guess you're going to be uh, killed. Yep. <laughs> Valiant effort, my friend. It's not enough. Has been it really isn't. And at this point, you have no play opportunities bottom. You see he's trying to make something happen bottom, but he really can't do anything in this bot lane. So he needs to just leave. I don't see a play for him bot whatsoever. Medusa, yeah. level 5, level 6 close to. Good luck. The only other thing you can do is maybe bring Rubik bottom if you want to get a kill bot. But Rubik Spearbreaker, that is such low damage. And I think these wisdom runes I get picked up. How many? I wasn't paying attention. Do they go one apiece? Wisdom rune. Uh, wisdom yeah, one apiece. One, yeah. Okay, which is good. The supports on Felt need levels badly. So I needed to find a way to make sure they have a game. And he's just doing that. He's going to charge top lane and look for something. That leaves an opening for bottom two. We'll have to would see. like to, yeah, they would like to fight more if possible on the side of Felt with, uh, you know, fights that lead into kills. That's what the Spirit Breaker and the Rubik are all made out of, just uh, brawling. And your cores are going to get extra gold from killing <clears throat> the kill formulas or the gold formulas being different. But currently, I mean, they <clears throat> they might dominate the map a little bit. Hit Immune's farming his own stacks, but there's also Moose soaking away some of that experience. You've got, three hero you've got five heroes in mid once again, <laughs> but uh, it is Albino Zebra moving away. And still, Kits is getting every rune here. Still punishing Red 2. Red 2 not having the greatest game here. The lowest net worth core in the game at the moment. Let's see if it's they want to make something happen bottom on the Medusa. I just love the casual. Okay, Doom comes out onto the Medusa. Only a couple more hits to finish her off. And that Doom tick damage looks super scary. Look at that. Denied. 
There we go. Easy deny. Tries to take the portal away. Not going to happen. They will rotate for a deny into a kill. Get but they're going back into Ursa. Away. Good. They don't have quite the numbers. It's just the two of them and a tombstone waiting for their return. I'm just staring at this lone iron branch in this mid river. I just, uh, does that bother you? It, it, it does a little bit, you know? It's just, it's 25 <laughs> gold. It's just lying there. PTP well, looking for it. He found it. Shout out to PTP. Albano Zebra. Oof. Okay, not, not going to be lucky with the charge escape. Could you consider Spearbreaker an albino zebra? <laughs> Good point. Uh -huh. Is this the most albino albino zebra hero in the game? Hmm. I'd argue Can't it think is. of another. I mean, I mean he's kind of blue, so... Yeah, I mean... I mean, let's just even more blue, so... I'm not going for blue. Anyway, he's going to charge mid lane. Unlikely this works. But potentially could. Very Yet again, 10-minute rune, we're bringing five heroes again. This is just the standard. Both supports from yeah. six-minute onward. They're First rune for to know this. Trying to force yes. some aggression out of Kits. It's a haste rune, though. Not his favorite rune. What runes have we got so far? So the same rune can't spawn twice Illusion, until the cycle is over. Arcane. Oh, the arcane's been taken. So what do we have left? A shield rune? And an invis? Shield and DD and invis, yeah. Oh, DD. Yeah, that one too. Shield and DD are, look pretty good. Oh, yeah. The, the shield is so good. Uh, at it's least. really good. I just remember that uh, that one game. I think I was, yeah, I was casting with Lizard for Division 2 uh, at the end. Of, I mean, at the start of the, the new patch. And I was like, oh, Ember Spirit has a barrier rune. And Ember already had like a lot of HP. I was like, this guy can't die. Uh, he enters the fight, in two seconds he's dead. And I was like, what the <laughs> just happened there? I was like, okay, maybe I underestimated that extra 1500 HP or something you got from that barrier, but... Uh... I mean, you get 50% extra health from a barrier. Yeah, which is a nice. lot. Moose, he is the target of the charge, but he's surviving for the time being. The ticks will finish him off, though, and onto the Storm Spirit, they go red. He's got that haste rune! Uh -oh. He's gonna run away with it! He's so no connection the from the Sonic Wave. wave. Whoopsie. So they only get moves on that. However, they can pressure the tier 1 mid, potentially. Bloody Nine gonna make the long trek to try and help that lane. Speed does not care. He just wants to hit creeps. He's Doombringer. And I'd argue this mid tower is not super valuable anymore. No, it's, it's, it's really not. Like, uh, you really gotta time your pushes. I think that was one interesting stat about gaming gladiators and why they were uh you know i feel like ahead of the curve compared to the other teams was that they weren't forcing objectives too early but when they course, did yeah. they get a rampage of towers basically it's just a lot of towers connected to each other's so they wouldn't force unnecessary pushes but right now uh felt they're so close to getting it so might as well just push it all the way down firestorm still taking on the undying keeping him at bay Moos won't be able to come into range for the deny, so Kits will finish off the T1 in mid. And um, <clears throat> that was also something we talked about with Lizard, is how bad it is actually to defend these mid towers. You look at Radiant Tier 1, for example, it's not as defendable as it used to be before. Like, there's extra stairs added onto it. It's like there's so many different routes to it now that is, it's really just not worth defending compared to last patch when mid tower was one of your most important towers. Now it feels like the side side lanes have much more importance. Yeah, I feel like your off laners, like they made it so before the off laner tower was the most useless tower to take. Yeah. But now if you take that tower, you all of a sudden have access into the enemy ancients, both of them. You yep. have access to the Tormentor, you got access to the Bounty Runes, uh, Wisdom Runes, The Wisdom Runes, yeah. Yeah, so you have like a lot more things you can do, and then the map is so big that these side lanes, you can just go around and farm forever. The mid lane isn't as important anymore. I'm definitely noticing that. You do take this mid lane tower, it does help, but you're exactly right. You don't want to spend too many resources to bulldoze down this tower. Because as you can see, if you attempt. look at where Ursa's farming right now, you could have done oh, yeah. that in the past. 
You could have just been up in the corners of the map hitting creeps. Taking mid lane does not help you infiltrate the carry's farming patterns anymore. Yeah, and in general, you don't see the uh, enemy carry uh, unless he's playing from behind, farming somewhere near the tier 3 tower. So, uh, yeah. very defensible position all the way that far. And there's also actually something to find, but uh, Dark Champ unable to locate any enemy heroes in the bottom lane with that smoke gank, so they're just going to focus on the tier 1 tower instead. Felt not looking to defend it at all. Instead, apply some vision to the top half of the map as they've already finished off that tier one tower. I I guess finishing off T Dyer's T1 gives you more access to the to the enemy outpost and those extra watchers that are placed down, potentially playing for nighttime Roshan. But you're not really playing with a Roshan lineup on the side of Felt. And you don't exactly have the fastest push unless you're playing with Underlord. Like, you feel like yeah. this is the only pusher that you have in this team. Co-op's great with waves, but not really your building hitter. Yeah, like, to give you some perspective, I guess this is something that's also good about taking off laner. If you're on Dire right now, right? Yeah. And let's just say Dire takes the Radiant Tier 1 in the off lane. Now, all of a sudden, if you ever force Roche during nighttime as Dire, you have an outpost you can always TP on. You can never take that back. But where do you TP on Radiant if that Tier 1 tower is dead? It's it's nowhere near the Roshan pit if that Tier 1 tower is dead. You got to TP to your Tier 2, and that is not a position you want to be in. So, still not very easy to take that tower just because it is close to the triangle. A lot of teams want to defend it, but if you can get that objective, I feel like it's very important in this patch to making sure you can get not only map control, but play more aggressively and secure Roshans. And when you have an Ursa on your team, something definitely you need to consider. As Roche, speaking of Roshan, he's going through the portal bottom right now. Head on up to top lane. <clears throat> Currently sitting on a pause, didn't quite get the reason for it, but they have pained out Bloody Nine in the middle of the river. Roshan, meanwhile, he's hugging the gate. It's like grabbing it. It's like grabbing it, tear yeah. It out. <laughs> like, tear it out. But uh, let's see if they jump uh, the Undying here. They are definitely stacking up with three. Or could already pop. No tombstone to be placed down. And maybe the damage is sufficient. Yes, it is easy. Fade, <laughs> Fade's also here just in case. Yeah, why not? But took advantage and of it the is post. a 1k advantage, 2k advantage for Felt. A lot of it's the back on the co-op and how much you're shutting down this Storm Spirit, doing a magnificent job of doing that. And Medusa had tons of stacks in the jungle as well. Plus, innately, is going to farm faster than Ursa till Battle Fury. But Ursa does have the Battle Fury. He's had it for a little while now. Keeping up in farm. Going into the Blink Dagger. If you keep this pace of the game, I don't know who to favor. I think they both have their merits. It's going to come down to... Who just has better initiation and can take the best fight? Because Medusa is still a beast in the late game, don't get me wrong. This hero is really hard to kill. And you have a good support lineup around him. Same with Co-op that scales really well into the game. You got the Orchid available. I'd say Felt right now or have a solid advantage in this game just because it's Orchid online versus Storm Spirit who does not have any way to deal with it. I will give you a real professional hot take that everybody should definitely listen to. Only the old Dog Champ roster could beat Felt. So Pro professional. <laughs> what are your credentials? <laughs> um, tour two victory with the old dog champ roster. Yeah, yeah, he's a professional. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let's see if the dog rat, the X five rat members on the side of dog champ this time can you know turn the course around. It is still the same felt roster as before, and uh, looking at some itemization, I spy a butterfly for the Medusa. So no extra real, no no real extra tankiness provided to this hero, but just straight up First more damage. Ursa, right? and yeah, there, there's Ursa who could still MKB, but I, I feel like the butterfly is it is it worth to build it this early, be especially because the Ursa is there. He's not gonna look at MKB for a while. That's the whole point of Butterfly, I think, okay. is you want to, it's a timing-based item. You want to get the Butterfly and then play, it gives you a lot of damage, of course, but uh, hold on. Low moves. Moves might die. Yeah, he's oh, we're going to pause dead. on him, that's fine. Yeah, he's dead for sure, but Ursa does not want to 
uh, MKB for his next like two items. He yeah. definitely wants to finish his blink, which he has. He wants to finish a BKB. Then he wants a basher. And then at that point, you consider the MKB, but that's already like maybe 30 minutes in the game here, where you're going to have a timing of Medusa where she finishes potentially. Uh, she, she's switching her item build up, but I think the butterfly would still be fine if you want to go that route. Where you'll have a really big timing if you do roll, you have the butterfly, you can just end the game because you're pretty unkillable. A lot of these heroes. Like the Storm, want to right-click a lot, and same with the Ursa. And if you can't burst Medusa in this game, Medusa's going to do Medusa things and just walk yep. down every single lane, and you're going to lose the game. So they see the DD co-op. <clears throat> they see a lot of heroes around, and Moose is basically not even a surprise. Pikachu and his uh, camera as surprise. in just a second. He's going to die. There we go. Not even a second required. And actually latches onto the Storm Spirit because the target died before connection. And they will get a secondary kill. I'm thinking they knew Moose was dead, but they didn't take into account that that charge is going to connect to somebody else if in vision. And perfectly and onto the, the Storm too. And the D-Ward too. Great and success. This is going really well if you're on filter right now. Speed, he's going for auras, which is slightly worrying because he's not using them. <laughs> right? he, he has the pipe. He has a Crimson coming out, but he's not in these fights. What good is it? He does have a Purge Creep too, which can get rid of the Orchid, which is a, a genius play, I think, if that's what he's going for. Bit of a reverse But he needs to start entity. playing with his team now. Entity had all these uh, self self gain or like personal gain items, and they played as a team, yeah. and now you have auras for yourself. But I guess there's going to be a time as well. where Dog Champ's going to be like, guys, let's clump up and go. But when is that sign? When is that signal going to be given? Who's going to light the fires for Gondor? And Moose as well on Skyrath. This item he's building, the Solar Crest, makes no sense on Skyrath if you really think about it. But he's really prioritizing just having the auras for his team. He's not building items to make his hero stronger. He's building items to make his team stronger. But team items are only good if you play together. Very true. Truer words have not been spoken. Albano Zebra, though, he's going to be caught with not a chance to charge away, so he just gives a bit of an extra bonk. And Fade, he does drop the portal down, but him and Solji are like, nah. Not, not this time. There's a bit too many hostiles in the area. I don't think they mind. Spearbreaker dies, who cares? This is kind of Spearbreaker's job in this game anyway. You go to the dangerous lane, you take what you can, and if you die, eh, it just gave your team vision space. Highway to the danger zone. It's definitely Spearbreaker living a dangerous life. If you're not living a dangerous life at Spearbreaker, you're not a Spearbreaker player. Yeah, you're, you're living your life wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you're playing the wrong hero. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Speed showing himself in mid. There's uh, both Fade and the Lobano Zebra nearby. And also Kits and Solji. So plenty of heroes stacked up in mid. They are going to smoke up out of vision from Dog Champ. Medusa and also Roshan has arrived. Way. She actually decided to build Scotty before the butterfly. So, uh, yeah. I don't like that as much as the butterfly approach. Because the Scotty. It's always good on Dusa, don't get me wrong, but it's still low damage. Oh, they're in the Roche pit. And Solji actually reveals himself for the D ward on the sentry. He doesn't actually see the Ops ward, but they will now see Medusa's here. They see the whole bunch is here. They've already finished off Roshan, and this could be tricky for Felt, but they're in the lead. Let's see if they can hold on to it after this fight. Kits running in the front right now. The Orchid silences up the Storm Spirit, takes some heavy hits, and Charge coming in from the back line as well from Albino Zebra. They've got the Medusa with the, mist, um, with the Gaze too. A big heal coming out from Bloody Nine. Nobody dying. Both yeah, having these crimson. big auras with the crimsons and Time the pipes. Time to go back in. Just not getting any kills here. The root onto two. Maybe here's the turnaround. Sonic wave. Big new connects onto three. Red two still makes his way out, but speed is left alone, and the big aura carrier will finally be brought down to the to the dust. And they even get the undying teleport to cancel. So bloody nines will be followed up, but there's a portal on the other side. They're gonna bring up Kit's fade and hit immune into the action. So two for one, but losing Roche. Yeah, more importantly, they were able to keep the Aegis on DNM. We saw the effect that they did have by just 
simply pop in Pipe and Crimson. However, when the Pipe and Crimson went down, they continued to chase, but I guess Storm Spirit didn't have enough mana to get an initiation off. So ended up turning right again without having Crimson or Pipe available. Just overstayed a little bit. I feel like they did have an opening where the, maybe they could have a good jump there, but it had to be time to do than what it was. Charge and left and silence coming oh, out just silence. in range for the Orchid. Very good. And of course, yeah, and of course the Ancient Seal on top. So double silence on top of the storm. He can't do anything. Yeah, that's a big steal in a game like this. Red 2's game is oh, so DNM. difficult. That's an H is down. Oh, this is not it's looking begun, good for... It's begun, T-Panda. It's, it's not begun. looking good <laughs> Surely has. 7.33C has begun. <laughs> And it always feels that like one bad team fight and then all of a sudden the teams just crumble. They don't know what to do. Maybe they can do nothing. It's hard to say. But one thing I do know, it's damn hard to come back when you start getting reverse snowballed like this. Yeah. All right, you're losing tor the Tormentor as well. It's like this is the, the time where the game feels unlosable, right? Close to it. It's definitely possibly still losable based on what heroes you have, but when you're sitting on a Medusa and you're winning a game like this, yeah, you probably feel like this game is really hard to lose. But you never know. Mistakes for still human can be made. Human stakes. Mm. <laughs> not too sure about <laughs> that. <laughs> There's definitely well, something at stake. not for everyone. See what Dogtime can do. They're trying to retaliate with a smoke, and maybe the Medusa all by herself. Surprise in the mid lane, and here we go. No more surprise Pikachu as this Doom is surely going to look like the end of the Medusa, or is it? She's still surviving Mystic Flare damage being spread upon two targets as well, and still has to burn through a thousand HP, but they will get the job done, Dog Champ. They get the kill they needed. Can they get out though? Bloody Nine getting body blocked by Ursa. Rooted up the both of them as well. That's a big 3000 HP on Dying. Still has a mechanism to. Geez, out of range now to heal up the Ursa. Maybe the Soul Rips are going to be enough. And now everything used, but that Ursa is not getting out. And this Undying, the raid boss. Not really a raid boss. Just a tanky one. <laughs> it's like a more like. What's something that's very durable? But just annoying. A hedgehog. Can't really think of it on top of my head. A hedgehog. <laughs> Nothing hedgehogs are annoying. <laughs> Either way, you're just in the fight, kind of there. You didn't really want to hit him, but he's not really doing anything. So they ignore him, get the kills there, and we saw they used everything on top of the Medusa there, Doom. But she's so tanky. This hero, even with the nerfs. We see why he was perma banned at the majors. Maybe they'll get a kill on Solji here. Yeah, he but will at lose what cost? the he will lose the stolen doom, which he did have actually from that last fight. And see who it was cast upon, but it was cast on someone. But they will get a retaliation kill, support for support. And you're doing so well on Dusa now. You can just go back for this butterfly, knowing Ursa hasn't even finished BKB yet. Yep. So how quickly can this MKB even come online? Even if you do get your MKB before the Basher, then you don't have the Basher, which is pretty core on Ursa too. Yeah, 5,000 gold. Ursa's feeling really far away. Yeah, 5,000 gold plus now uh, freshly finishing off that BKB. This is going to be several, multiple minutes until he's going to have it. Also, does he have information about this butterfly? If he starts building something else now above the the MKB, that's, that's going to push him even further away into the crucial timing. So it, it's actually a huge deal. Do they have the information for that MKB? They know he's going to build it at some point, but do they know he's already on it? I'm sure they have a good idea. But you I would, always play I would like the RNG so. as well. And just like be like, I believe that I'm going to hit my through this evasion. And then you don't need an MKB. Just got to believe. What else would he build on this Ursa, if not an MKB? Is there something else like a... Uh... He's got a Shard queued up, which is pretty important. He's got a Basher, which is quite important for Ursa too. Basher, actually, yeah, that's the that's the one you really want to get on this, this yep. hero. So that's definitely two items before. So no straight up MKB, at least. <clears throat> Wants to be able to have that extra lockdown. I mean, they need it. Their lineup doesn't have the greatest lockdown. Their only stun is Inferno Blade, if you want to count that, and Electric <laughs> Vortex. 
Well, that's it. That's pretty much it, yeah. Gotta find some conventional ways. Unless your support gets a, you know, Helm of the Dominator, it brings a Centaur to the fight. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. Well, Doom is, though. Doom technically yeah. is that guy, yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I think he might want to go for that. He's going for the purge play, but I haven't really seen it being super effective as of yet. And I think speed, I'm not going to blame speed just as an individual, but I feel like they really didn't use these auras to full effect. And now he's in a situation where he has all these auras and he probably wishes he had a BKB or maybe an Octarine core. He just finished BKB. Going in for more of those greedy, selfish items to potentially yeah. carry into the late game. Hold on, Zebra, he's found the enemy. <clears throat> he will lose his life for it. But again, just uh, getting more information for Felt. Still an 11k lead for them. Also, only one uh, tier 2 tower is standing on the side of Dog Champ. So, this mid tower to fall, meaning the next team fight. Is going to be a high ground push for Felt if they're successful. So they don't really have that much uh, space for error. They need to find a way to take a fight to them because Felt's doing a good job of just farming the map. Spearbreaker is taking the little farm that he can on the dangerous part. Ideally, he doesn't die. It still gives good EXP and gold. But they're bringing a lot of heroes to do that. And it really doesn't change the whole impact of the game. And if he can get away with taking that farm over there without dying, that'll be absolutely huge for them. Moose is being targeted in the top lane. Charge is coming in fast oh, and Kits, Kits is, is going for it. Yeah, he's got the barrier rune. And there goes Moose. Dies to the Orchid damage. Actually, Albana Zebra gets him with the bash. He's located bloody nine. And there's nobody else around, so I'll just let him go. Also, that's a fairly fast Roshan time. It's about, it was about 50 seconds or a minute or something like that. Uh, yeah, 49, 50 seconds would be accurate as it's now past half. I think you can safely assume if you're doing your calculations that Rosh will be on the Radiant side when it respawns. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're going to be able to kill it within like it will. 30 seconds. Yeah, they got the top lane. Get a bit of a bonk onto speed here. It's Albino Zebra starting off the fight. You're going to have to pop your BKB soon. There's more targets arriving. Doesn't want to use it right away, but the amount of oh, lockdown that they're facing right now. Beautiful charge there from Albino Zebra. Gets killed off by the Ogre Seal Totem out of all things. And Speed just wants to doom someone. He's going to doom the Underlord. So maybe that allows them to get that fighting chance over this. He's battling Solji and Fade on the high ground. Bloody Nine, they're just dying to this Medusa. She's just way too much of an issue. And everybody's running away. One teleport successful. That's going to be speed. Getting out of the fight. And it's really so, just... It, it wasn't even a fight for Dark Champ. Why does... So the shield rune, right? We saw it in the top lane. He blinked in with the shield rune, didn't care. One minute later, the shield rune is still on him. Yeah, you know what the duration is? You know what the duration is? It's 75 it's like seconds. 75, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then he goes bottom lane, one minute later, jumps in. They can't even, they barely break the shield, taking all the damage. So he just two shield runes for one fight. Very balanced. Very, very balanced indeed. But uh, Medusa found all by herself, and that monopole is already down to half. Can they get this kill? That butterfly might be the difference between life and death for Hit Immune. And we got the Sonic Wave from Kits. The charge comes out as well, and Hit Immune will live. He will survive the boy who lived, and he will get these kills as well. Double for him. And oh boy, Dog Champ, it was, it was the perfect opening. But the butterfly. It, it, it literally just pays off here. So many missed hits before that mana pool was empty in Medusa. She did not have a lot of HP to work with there. A couple more hits, she would have died, but that was that was a lot of evasion kicking in. Yeah, I mean, still 15 Fury swipes on top of the Medusa, so she still got hit a lot with everything. No but the crucial was missing, yeah. Medusa's still not balanced. I, I don't care what hero it is. If you get jumped by five heroes by that many spells and you don't die, there's fundamentally something wrong with the hero. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. 
15 times by right. Ursa. We see, Takes we see a the whole replay mystic here. flare. All right, look look at that mana pool. It feels like it's small. It's slowly dropping. It's slowly dropping, and then it just comes to a bit of a halt. And this is eight Fury swipe stacks. This is eight right now. Now it's up to ten, and they're not getting anywhere close to hitting hit immune. Comes in with the ogre seal totem. Gets a couple connections. Still up to thirteen, and it's just just not enough. Like so many missed hits. And I was looking at DNM's inventory like some time ago. He finished off a halberd, and now he has the MKB lined up. So no basher. Uh, no shard. Instead of finished Halbert and now MKB. Yeah, I, I don't hate this choice just because you needed an item and you needed it quickly to help you. But you can't hit her, but she can't hit you either if you have a Halbert. So for the cost, <laughs> it's really not that bad. I like, it's not, I like, it's not I like the one idea, choice, but, was... but he was not going to get to this MKB anytime soon so he goes for something that can help him now yeah 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 it's like i'm just <clears throat> maybe debating a bit with dnm like could he have afforded to ignore the halbert buildup and get 1500 gold somewhere to finish off the mkb right. I, I feel like i'm still wanting to see that mkb earlier but they did not have the info on the butterfly which well you get an mkb regardless medusa has one on top of a double damage rune. yeah congratulations you get to see what you wanted hey. but what can dog champ do against this not much i mean it has to be a miracle it really has to be a miracle to turn things around they don't have the auras right now with the doom coming out but this medusa is just killing everyone right now no hope no chance no nothing moons is the next one to drop right click the way by kits who is having a flawless game zero nine and thirteen and the curse yeah. of the five rats in the dog champ roster the seems to continue. GG. Letters are coming. They had to think about that one for a second. I thought it was going to instantly come after that team fight, but it's okay to maybe they're having a bit of discussion. Deuce is still strong. That's all I got to say about this one. Well, I got a lot more to say than that, however. But <laughs> kids, very strong this game. Had.